bitter two countries. President Buhari reiterates commitment to next level agenda without prejudice to ethnicity or religion. Interest groups sign off on executive order for enforcement of COVID-19 prevention guideline. Feminist International has any proof of the 12 people that they claim were shot at the target. Facts first, not fictions. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed calls Amnesty International to order over unproven reports. Good evening and thanks for joining us on NTN Network News. I'm Joseph Johnson in Abuja. Jennifer Igwe joins me from Lagos. President Mohamed Buhari says the federal government under his watch does not and will not allow religious prejudice or partisanship to influence any of its decisions and policies aimed at taking Nigeria to the next level of socio-economic development. Addressing members of the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs during a courtesy visit, the president maintains that his solemn disposition is to be fair and just to all segments of the society. State has Correspondent Adam Sambo has more. I try to meet with all groups from across the lens and breadth of our great nation, as it is both my responsibility and also serves as an opportunity to listen to honest and frank perspectives. Such frank perspectives by the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, led by the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar III, were given behind closed doors. President Buhari was, however, emphatic that both in his personal and official capacity, their views and support will not be taken lightly. The federal government has worked tirelessly to combat insecurity and other challenges that are confronting the country. Security is a protracted problem, but we are not relenting in our efforts. I assure you that the government remains committed to act on behalf of the people of our nation. Educate Nigerians on the need to maintain peace. We don't have to lose peace before we appreciate it. While thanking the Muslim Ummah for promoting interreligious dialogue in the country, the president reassured all Nigerians that religious freedom will be guaranteed by the federal government as a constitutional responsibility. If the country must work, we must continue to work together in spite of our ethnic, religious and political differences because Nigeria is a collective project. I will also seek your further support in speaking to our people and to help amplify this message through your very tried and tested networks. I implore you not to relent in praying for us. We won't let you down. President Buhari also made a case for religious leaders to fully back towards ensuring success. The alternative school program initiative launched recently to not only address Nigeria's high out-of-school rates, but also equip the youth with the right tools in making decisions at every turn of their lives. The president also solicited their support for the genuine efforts at addressing the public health crisis occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. As government continues to work towards managing this crisis, it is also critical that you lend your voices in support of those basic but fundamental protocols that can significantly curtail the spread of this disease. Washing of hands, using face masks, and ensuring social distancing as much as possible have been proven to be our first line of defense in the fight against this virus. When the vaccines, which we are working hard to procure for the nation arrive, 
please join in the drive to educate people that these vaccines are meant to save lives and protect everyone. Sultan Muhammad Saad Abubakar commended President Muhammad Buhari for the success he's achieved so far in the Northeast, calling for decisive action against banditry in parts of the Northwestern and North Central states, while appealing to Nigerians to refrain from making inflammatory comments that are sowing seeds of discord in the polity and exacerbating the current level of insecurity in the land. The Sultan formally identified himself with a head speech campaign and called for action. From the State House, Adam Musambo, NTA News. And President Mohamed Buhari has reiterated Nigeria's commitment to working with the international community towards achieving global peace, food security, and sustainable environment. This was while receiving an audience three new ambassadors posted to the country on tour of duty. Again, State House correspondent Adam Musambo has the report. The three new envoys who are in the State House, Nigeria's seat of government, to present their letters of credence to President Muhammad Buhari are Ihad Mustafa Award of Egypt, Faisal Ibrahim Al Gamdi of Saudi Arabia, and Alejandro Francisco Herrero of Argentina. Addressing the envoy shortly after, President Buhari congratulated them for officially commencing diplomatic functions in Nigeria. He hopes that their respective mandates will be utilized towards improving cordial relations with the country consistent with the Vienna Convention and global best practices. Nigeria also enjoys very good bilateral relations with your respective countries. We are to pursue bilateral dialogue as well as build cooperation on the basis of constructive mutual respect in a shared vision for the future. Nigeria is a nation of great diversity and we are ready to always convert these diversities to advantages. In addition to the United Nations, President Buhari said all the three countries are also members of the G77 and the South-South Cooperation, which Nigeria is proud to be associated with. Nigeria and the home countries of the envoys, he said, have common challenges, which include terrorism, insurgency, climate change, population explosion, human trafficking, corruption, poverty, and proliferation of small arms and light weapons. On top of all this, the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic has come with different strains that force additional challenges to the initial outbreak. These challenges underscore the need for the international community to work even more in concert to collectively identify appropriate ways and means to globally resolve these challenges. Ambassador Ihad Mustafa of Egypt, who spoke on behalf of the envoys, assured the president of their commitment to work with his administration to further enhance and strengthen their country's friendship and partnership with Nigeria. We noted with appreciation the effort exerted to make us feel welcome. We would count on your kind support and guidance to this end. The three new ambassadors were earlier on arrival accorded a befitting diplomatic welcome by officers and soldiers of the Presidential Guards Brigade. From the State House, Adam Musambo, NTA News. Turning to health matters now, stakeholders in the healthcare sector and other interest groups have commended the president for the signing of an executive order on the enforcement of COVID-19 protection protocols. The executive order, tacked COVID-19 Health Protection Regulations 2021, took immediate effect upon the president's assent and is expected to safeguard the health and well-being of Nigerians in the face of rising COVID-19 cases in the country. The guidelines basically state that uh, any person or 
who contravenes provisions of the regulations commits upon conviction risk a fine or a term of six months imprisonment or both in accordance with section 5 of the quarantine act chairman of the presidential task force and secretary to the government of the federation boss mustafa had earlier praised the president for giving push to efforts compelling nigerians to be more vested in their personal safety and embrace collective responsibility for the safety of others around them. You remember during the first surge he signed one. Uh, this is an update with regards to this second surge and I believe that if we receive the cooperation of Nigerians uh, it will limit our interfering with their social and private lives. Well, let's just discuss this a bit further as uh, Professor Abdul Salami Nasidi, former Director General, Nigeria Center for Disease Control, joins me via Zoom to talk on the initiative and how it would invariably give impetus to the enforcement of COVID-19 preve prevention guidelines. Professor, uh, thank you for joining us on NTA Network News. Thank you very much. All right, so there is the issue of moderation of cost of preventive items by pharmacies. How effectively can this be monitored to ensure compliance in addition to the other enforcement measures specified in the regulations? Uh, first and foremost, I must commend the government by, uh, uh, for bringing out this executive order and that serves as a strong statement uh, to all Nigerians that uh, COVID-19 is real, it's a big problem, and uh, nobody should actually uh, play around with it. And uh, the executive order contains all the salient uh, points that uh, every Nigerian that cares for himself, for his family, for his community and nation to actually abide, abide by. If not, I can assure you things could get out of hand. Uh, secondly, you know, the issue of enforcement has become real. Uh, the executive order has listed how this enforcement will be carried out, all those that are supposed to be uh, involved. But uh, the key is one thing to enforce is another thing to make sure that Nigerians are convinced. So it has to be uh, a, a, an element of enforcement and uh, effective risk communication so that people will not uh, relent and think this is a joke. It is reality. The virus is spreading. The virus is ahead of us. We must abide by these uh, executive order regulations, by the NCDC protocols, to actually save ourselves. All right, uh, Professor, the regulations compel any person or persons discovered to have tested positive to COVID-19 to be isolated or admitted to a designated health establishment. This is, however, not so clear if that includes a directive to such health establishments not to refuse admitting patients showing symptoms and already in a dire state of health. Uh, in, in the situation we are now, uh, the, no health center can reject any patient. Okay. Uh, what we recommended in our protocol uh, is to actually get all health centers, you know, to establish temporary holding areas where patients that do come with uh, symptoms that mimic uh, COVID-19 uh, should be held and, uh, uh, you know, samples taken and, and, and sent to uh, laboratories for testing. Those who come out positive can now be referred uh, to uh, spe special treatment centers. Uh, this has to be done because uh, if care is not taken and this protocol is not followed, uh, there could be enhanced transmission, not only within the communities and within the patients, but even the healthcare workers' life will be at, at risk. So uh, I will just have to say that, uh, you know, this uh, measure by the government is minimal, that we must change our attitude to uh, follow. If not, I can assure you, you have to watch out. A second lockdown might be inevitable. So if you don't want second lockdown, please abide by the protocols and listen to the government. The issue of fighting COVID is not a government issue alone. It's an issue for every one of us. Everybody must rise to face this challenge. It's becoming a big problem. Don't let it hit you. Thank you.
Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Like you said, nobody likes uh, a second lockdown, uh, even if it's uh, looming. Uh, but you've said it all. It's inevitable, and uh, attitude is very key. Thank you, Professor Abdul Salami Nasidi, former Director General, Nigeria Center for Disease Control. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye. All right. In the meantime, as case counts increase across the country, some key players are intensifying efforts towards creating increased awareness and enlightenment on COVID-19 vaccines, especially as Nigeria is expect to take delivery of some doses of some of the available vaccines soon. Abu Bakr Usman Akwanga reports that the National Primary Health Care Development Agency is facilitating the latest engagement with Northern traditional rulers at its 20, 2021 first quarter meeting. The core objective is to enhance capacity response of communities to allay fears about the COVID-19 vaccines. Sustainable global effort in mitigating impact of COVID-19 is gradually shifted to the development and application of vaccines and collaborations such as this is critical in defeating the scourge. The engagement session, matters, therefore, is to strengthen measures on community concerns. awareness and acceptability of COVID-19 vaccination to control the spread of the virus. The National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, which is the federal government agency, with responsibility for vaccine-related matters, has brought together a highly professional and dedicated multi-sectoral team to drive the process of introducing safe and efficacious COVID-19 vaccine. The Ministry of Health has concerns about getting its job done under those circumstances. This is a task that we're committed to doing Experts say the false ooze around the COVID-19 vaccines should not prevent Nigerians from allowing themselves to be vaccinated, more so when scientific and clinical examinations have proven the vaccines to be safe and effective. They followed all the guidelines, all the um, safety protocols, and they were approved by FDA. Key players say collaboration will be strengthened to ensure the defeat of the coronavirus pandemic. The two holy marks in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia is also to reopen for Nigerian pilgrims under stringent COVID-19 safety protocols and vaccination. Vaccine may be a condition for being able to come to Saudi Arabia to perform Hajj this year. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. Now, the federal government is calling Amnesty International to order over some unproven negative reports it issued on Nigeria. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed, in an interactive session with newsmen in Abuja, encouraged the group to put facts first rather than trade in fiction and untruths. Anthony Forsen reports. Amnesty International had published a report to mark 100 days of lucky protest accusing the Nigerian government of cover-up since the lucky toll-gate protest. Reacting to the publication, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed said Amnesty International should get its facts right or better still remain quiet. If Amnesty International has any proof, let Amnesty International take advantage or the judicial panel of inquiry set up by the Lagos State Government to go and tell them the names and addresses of the 12 people that they claim were shot at the electric target. Otherwise, they have to shut up and stop, you know, annoying us. The minister wondered why Amnesty International will derive pleasure in portraying Nigeria in bad light and look the other way when it has to do with other countries. The same Amnesty International did not say one word when the American government arrested and are busy prosecuting those who invaded Capitol Hill. The American government has vowed they will search, arrest, and prosecute anybody involved in the attack on Capitol Hill. But when Nigerians now want to arrest and prosecute those hoodlums that were responsible for the killing
killings of 37 policemen and six soldiers, Amnesty International will now find its lost voice. What kind of double standard is that? The Amnesty International report claims 12 people were killed during the NSAS protest in Lagos. In Abuja, Anthony Forsen, NTA News. Oh. The presidency has also reacted to the latest Transparency International report on corruption index in Nigeria. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president and media and publicity, Garba Shehu. The president says, uh, President Buhari observes credits for diminishing corruption in public service. It says the president has and will continue to vigorously support prevention, enforcement, public education and enlightenment activities of anti-corruption agencies. The Transparency International report uh, it is, is not an accurate portrayal of facts on ground explaining that in the coming days, the government's technical unit on governance research will be providing more detailed information on the sources of the TI data. The statement alluded to the fact that TI 2019 report showed that 60% of their data was collected from businesses and other entities with issues bordering on transparency and the ease of doing business at the port. Although this is a government ready to learn from mistakes and make corrections, the economy of this country in its fullness is bigger than the seaports. We have we are also not unaware of the characters behind the TI in Nigeria, whose opposition to the Buhari administration is not hidden, given a breakdown of the monies recovered. It says a Naira-dominated review that excludes recoveries in dollars, pounds, euro, show that a sum of 1.2 trillion Naira was recovered by EFCC between 2009 uh, to 2019. Uh, 939 billion naira of the total was said to have been recovered between 2015 to 2019. The presidency challenged TI to provide indices and statistics of its own to justify its sensational and baseless rating on Nigeria and the fight against corruption. Let's take some messages now. Stay with us. Are you ready for this? Ready for Let me let you AJ. Ready for this? Ready for this? Give me some bass. That good for you? Nice AJ. Just one. Bring it out. Just one. Double it. Just one. Just one. I was born hungry for success. It's the Nigerian way. Globe gets it. Champions stay hungry. Oh yeah. Globe gets it big time. One more for sure. Champions go the distance and then go further. Globe, the heart of a champion. This is the Wilson family last week. Hmm. This is the Wilson family this week. What's changed? What? The Wilson family got maximum entertainment for less. And now they're closer than ever. Your family can be too. How does this work? With world-class international channels that put the quality back in your quality time. That's what I'm talking about. Go TV Max will bring you and your family closer in no time. So upgrade to Go TV Max for only 2999 naira today. Make enjoy. Go TV. Love it. The steering committee of the MSME Survival Fund and the Guaranteed Offtake Scheme chaired by the Honorable Minister of State, Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Ambassador Miriam Katagum, wishes to inform the public that the MSME Survival Fund payroll support portal will be exceptionally reopened for states that have not met their quota. The portal will be open from 27th January to 2nd February 2021. The payroll support track of the MSME Survival Fund scheme, which was flagged off on the 21st of September 2020, is aimed at supporting vulnerable MSMEs in the payroll obligations of over 500,000 employees for a period of three months. To date, the following states have met their quota and are consequently not eligible to participate in the reopening exercise. The states are Benue, Klaatu, Bauchi, Kano, Kaduna and Rivers and the FCT.
For further details, please visit www.survivalfund.gov.ng. Kindly note that registration of this scheme is free. Beware of fraud stars. Signed, Project Delivery Office. Hello, I bring you wonderful news. The village headmaster is coming back to your screen. Mowiri, I bring you a Teacher, Better school for last meeting. Not be honest on a rugged, yeah, yes, school for each I mean, I know, I know, I don't know for you. Sekra, it's called Oja Village. Kadesi, we know how to at all at all. Yeah, at all. Nabio, eh? And I know that even you too, you are getting a lot of orders. Eh, hey, we are trying to shower. Sweep her leg out. She was standing there. Sweep it. I love you so much. And how did I give you the impression that I was interested in that position? 50 year anniversary. You mean anniversary? I mean, I didn't try to talk with that now. Don't do that, not for me. You don't want to make a guy me. Not for me because of for me. Oboni Resiti. to travel to the Etihad Stadium to take on second place Manchester City. Will they get a reality check or can they pull off the upset? Find out as Manchester City welcomes Sheffield United on the Premier League Live, showing this Saturday on the NT Network from 3.30pm. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Axis Bank, Papai Jebu, Lipton and Close Up in association with Goal.com. You're still watching NTA Network News with me, Joseph Johnson. Central Bank of Nigeria says it is committed to developing a strong and viable commodity exchange that will promote efficient pricing in the country. Central Bank uh, Governor Godwin Emefiele stated this at an inaugural steering committee meeting for the repositioning of Nigeria Commodity Exchange. Musa Abubakar reports. For obvious reasons, Nigeria's agricultural sector has attracted attention from the federal government. A major reason is the bid to diversify the economy and promote food sufficiency in the country. This meeting by the Central Bank of Nigeria is another intervention approved by the President to brief stakeholders on modalities to transform the Nigeria Commodity Exchange. That the CBN, as majority shareholder of the Nigerian Commodity Exchange, collaborate with the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority and the African Finance Corporation under the InfraCo structure to develop and implement a strategic repositioning plan for the Nigerian Commodity Exchange to make the, the exchange an efficient world class commodity exchange. The meeting is expected to come up with strategies to revamp the exchange and consolidate on government's effort aimed at strengthening agricultural value chain. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar, NT News. The Federal Inland Revenue Service says the petroleum industry bill being considered at the National Assembly will jumpstart the most ambitious gas revolution in Nigeria. Executive Chairman of FIRS, Mohamed Nami, while making submissions before the House of Representatives at her committee on PIB, noted that going by the provisions in the bill, the abundance of gas will enhance revenue generation and economic growth. National Assembly correspondent Lamiali reports. 
is a record 4 trillion naira tax collection in the period January to October of 2020. The Federal Inland Revenue Service sees the petroleum industry bill as another means of shoring up government revenue as it will enable for the first time the adoption of dual tax regime. These fiscal changes, as pointed out by Mohamed Nami during the public hearing, are on the hydrocarbon and companies' income tax, both in the upstream sector of the petroleum industry. An important piece of legislation, which if passed into law, will change the administration, governance, and fiscal landscape of the oil and gas industry in Nigeria. The PIB is drafted will enhance competition, attract more investments, which translates into job creation, in addition to increase revenue generation in the long term in the upstream sector, a philosophy fully embraced by the revenue service. The FRS is the total support of the nation's drive to fully develop the oil and gas industry and get the much desired benefits for the, from the extraction and exploration Chairman of the ATA Committee on PIB and House Chief Whip Mohammed Tahir Mungunu reiterated that Parliament is committed to deliver a document that is in the best interest of all stakeholders. It is going to go a long way in guiding us as legislators in arriving at the PIB that will reflect the public hearing enabled engagements with government organizations, organized labor, the private sector, those communities and other interest groups. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. Meanwhile, the public hearing on the Petroleum Industry Bill at the House of Representatives turned dramatic following disagreements between some representatives of host communities of Nigeria producing oil and gas. When the group was called to submit its memoranda, a misunderstanding ensued amongst the members, leading to altercations. Security agents had to intervene to restore order. One of those involved gave explanations and reasons for the misunderstanding. All we are agitating for is 10% equity. What I fight was there is because of 10% equity. Now, experts believe that a conducive work environment is crucial for optimum productivity. This is echoed by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Presilva, at the foundation lane for a state-of-the-art edifice, which will serve as the headquarters of the Department of Petroleum Resources in Abuja. Lydia Samson has more. The design, a replica of the oil barrel, the DPR headquarters is poised to become one of the towers of excellence in Abuja when completed, if the views of experts is anything to go by. Typical of the tradition in this environment, the development is accompanied by music and dance. The approval for the project by the President, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources explains, is indicative of his commitment to repositioning the oil and gas sector in Nigeria for greater efficiency. The construction of this building, tagged the barrel, is yet another milestone by His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari in the area of infrastructural development and its commitment to reposition the oil and gas industry. For the DPR boss, the organization must imbibe global environmental best practices to play its regulatory role in the 21st century. Our work requires data to enhance and maximize revenue for our country. And that is why we really put to use those, that are, those things that are available to us, especially uh, uh, IT facilities, information technology, and that is exactly what the building is representing. I have no doubt that the DPR headquarters will be completed on time and to the full satisfaction of our client. The best part is that the contractors are committing to actualizing the projected 24 months time frame. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. 
Airpeace has continued to soar in the acquisition of brand new aircraft to boost customer comfort and safety. Out of the 30 ordered for the first batch, 13 arrived with the delivery of one Embraer 195E series. Aviation correspondent Emmanuel Imero captures the exciting moments at the Namdezigu International Airport, Abuja. surprising that why so many airlines are still struggling to come out of the effect of COVID-19 pandemic. Airpeas is taking delivery of some brand new aircraft, one of which has arrived in Nambi Azikwe International Airport. It has always been the dream of APs to have a couple of brand new aircraft in their fleets. Starting their quest with the acquisition of 777 in 2018. Though, at the launch of APs in 2014, the airline commenced operations with fairly used aircrafts. But realizing the problems associated with cost of maintenance, Airpeace is sticking to its initial business plan of having a fleet of mainly brand new aircrafts. Over almost $500 million uh, involved in the acquisition. We ordered 30 of them. The E2 series is part of the, is one of the best selling machines today in the world. Uh, we've seen the company growing from six aircraft uh -huh. at the start of. We have been told by the MD of the airline that not less than 8,000 people will be gainfully employed. This is a major achievement. For the pilot who flew in from Brazil, Airpeace is doing well considering advantages of acquiring new planes. It's a way of saving fuel, flying smoothly, with a very good uh, comfort for the, the passengers. And operating the aircraft is so simple. The workload on the pilots is, is simple and easy. It allows them to bother themselves in flying the aircraft. Airpeace appreciated President Muhammad Buhari for creating a conducive environment for private investment to thrive. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. Nigeria is poised to officially join the World Economic Forum's Global Plastic Action Partnership, of course, a platform that works with governments, businesses and civil society to translate pl plastic pollution uh, commitments into uh, concrete uh, solutions. The announcement emerges uh, from the Davos Agenda, a global summit convened to choose bold solutions to curb the COVID-19 pandemic and ensure a green and inclusive recovery in the years to come. Director Global Plastic Action Partnership, Kristin Hugh, earlier joined my colleague Ruth Faguele from Geneva, Switzerland, to give more insight on how this plastic project will be of benefit to Nigeria. And at the forum, you said plastic waste and pollution are intrinsically tied to a nation's ability to build a sustainable and thriving economy that leaves no one behind, if I'm correct. Now, in what ways um, will the World Economic Forum support Nigeria in turning the tide on plastic pollution? Yes, absolutely. The current take-make-waste model is simply not sustainable. Uh, it's taking a toll on the environment and human health. Therefore, we're, we're, we're looking to create a circular economy for plastic that will eliminate waste and, can, and promote the continual use of natural resources as an alternative approach. This can actually yield incredible in, uh, economic benefits as well as health benefits. Yet less than 10% of the world's global economy is recognized as circular. That said, I will say that, that Nigeria has already taken a leadership position in creating the African Circular Economy Alliance, along with the World Economic Forum, UNEP, Africa Development Bank, and a host of other African nations. So we're really looking forward to engaging okay. the Ministry of the Environment to build a plan for the country's transition to a circular economy for plastics. Okay, Kristen, very briefly now, um, from what you're saying, what would you say are the opportunities available to Nigeria if we have to turn plastic plastic waste into wealth, not, uh, and also bearing in mind the challenges associated with waste management, talking about in Nigeria. Well, I think you've just hit it right there. It's, it, waste management is one of the key issues. So mismanaged plastic waste and unsustainable plastics production is very commonplace, not just in West Africa, but throughout the world. High volumes of plastics 
uh, production without any consideration of reuse or design as the end goal. So we're looking to just build the capacity to manage collection, sorting and recycling of plastic waste, while also increasing awareness of what sustainable practices can actually be amongst businesses and consumers. And I'll tell you, there's some really great innovators already in, uh, in Nigeria looking to create these opportunities. And then lastly, we're also exploring and supporting new and innovative financing models such as asset recycling blended finance and credit enhancement and others and we're completely we're, we're looking forward to completing this journey and working so closely with the government of nigeria to make the plastic eradication and the reducing of the plastic menace a reality director global plastic action partnership christine hugh speaking with my colleague ruth Aguale a little earlier there Let's talk security now. Major General Ibrahim Atahiru has formally assumed office as the 25th Chief of Army Staff. Defence correspondent Ismail Musa was at the Army Headquarters venue of the event. With this brief but historic ceremony, Major General Ibrahim Atahiru, former General Officer Commanding 82 Division, steps in as a new Chief of Army Staff. While Lieutenant General Tukuburatai, the last man standing in Course 29, bows out. Only remember you. Elated and emotional Major General Ibrahim Atahiru, a former Theta Commander Operation Lafia Dole, from the Infantry Corps, promised to build on General Buratai's legacy. I wish to state that I also consider myself lucky to be taken over from you despite the very big shoes you are leaving behind for me to fill. I will continue to count on your advice and support as I pilot the affairs of the Nigerian Army. Military, the world over. To the outgoing Army Chief, who has been in office for 66 months, words cannot express his gratitude to President Muhammadu Buhari for the privilege to serve. Very senior officers, officers and soldiers of the Nigerian Army, I'm thanking you for your loyalty, trust, discipline and commitment to the President, Commander-in-Chief President Muhammadu Buhari, and also to my humble self while I served as the Chief of Army Staff. A lot has been achieved in the past five years and more is required from the new army chief. From the Nigerian Army headquarters in Abuja, Ismail Musa, NT News. And more than 159 million naira has been presented to families of deceased police officers who died during the violence that trailed the NSAS protest across some states in the country. This is part of the newly initiated life insurance and family welfare scheme of the police. Francis Form reports that the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, presented the checks to beneficiaries, calling on the media to continue supporting security agencies for their sacrifices. It is a moment to remember sacrifice by the gallant police officers and men who died while ensuring peace and order in their fatherland. So, for that, this initiative by the police to support family of officers and men who died in service is another honor in addition to giving hope to the survivors. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed said security agencies and the citizens must work together in ensuring that Nigeria is secured, peaceful and more developed. I want to please uh, assure the relations of the departed uh, gallant officers that the force will not abandon you and that the people and government of Nigeria we appreciate what your loved ones have done, the fact that they've paid the supreme sacrifice. And also, Inspector General of Police Mohamed Adamu assured of more motivational initiatives and support to the police. I urge you all to please utilize this phone being given judiciously in meeting the training and welfare needs of the children and wives of the deceased persons. The Nigeria police lost some of its personnel during the NSAS violence in October 2020, exactly 100 days ago. Franks is from NTN News. Let's now turn our attention to Lagos State, where Jennifer is with some stories. Jennifer? Thank you, Joseph. 
Still on the police, the Nigerian Police Force says it will sustain various initiatives designed to address welfare concerns of its operatives, particularly in the area of bridging housing deficit. Inspector General of Police Mohamed Adamu said this while flagging off a mass housing scheme for senior police officers in Lagos. Adeni Itaiwo reports. With the critical role that officers and men of the Nigerian Police Force are mandated to play in ensuring security of lives and property, it is only necessary that government and other stakeholders provide them with necessary incentive that can spur them on. Provision of a good accommodation to shelter them after he had this job is a good start. Every police personnel desire a decent home to return to after an exciting day's duty. The project being executed at this site today serves to fulfill this purpose and it was also designed to restore the dignity of an average police officer. Initiated in 2018 under a public-private partnership with a property management company, the scheme is expected to deliver a total of 80 sets of three-bedroom apartments, 10 flats per building. The edifice, according to stakeholders, signposts the resolve of police authorities to prioritize the welfare of officers going forward. He is bent on redevelopment the barracks that we we always complain that they are an eyesore. The officers are men that will move into this, this building. The moment we discover that a particular beneficiary is not taking good care of the accommodation, we'll eject him. So the entirety of this place is going to be fully redeveloped for the benefit of the Nigeria Police Force. And they hope that the people who safeguard our lives and properties would at least leave home every day and have befitting accommodation to come back to. With a two-year timeline for completion, the barracks is expected to shed its old look for a new one with gradual relocation of benefiting officers. In Lagos, Adeni Itaewo, NTN News. Now to engender good governance and promote the principle of democratic practice, citizens must be ready to demand accountability and evaluation of government's policies. These views formed the nucleus of the 16th edition of the annual Adekunle Kukoyi Memorial Lecture held by the Institution of Surveyors Lagos State Branch. Michael Olale reports. These awards and honors are pointed to the indelible marks the late Adekunle Kukoi left in the sands of time. 19 years after his demise, this memorial lecture has become a platform to eulogize his remarkable contributions to humanity across various spheres. A man who talked the talk and walked his talk. Great men are never forgetting by history. One way or another, history remembers them. The focus this time is a review of the nation's institutional capacity for improved performance and economic growth, which the resource person suggests must start with identity management. Granting full autonomy to local government, as explained by the seasoned professional broadcaster, is key to providing an enabling environment for cottage industries and entrepreneurship to thrive. Every individual has a right to ask your leader your senator, your house rep, your local government chairman, questions. Why contributing its quota to inspiring society change through its platforms? This surveying profession is not forgetting its mentorship responsibility as awards were presented to winners of the 16th annual Adekunle Koyi Memorial Essay Competition. You must survey your land. That's the first prerequisite for registration of your title. The late Adekunle Kukoi Memorial Lecture was instituted in 2005 to remind the public some of the enduring legacies of the former president of the Nigerian Institution of Surveyors in Lagos, Michael Lale. NT News. Time for a break now. Joseph Johnson will continue afterwards. Stay tuned.
Live Boy hand sanitizers with 70% alcohol will kill 99 for 9% of germs. Now available in convenient packs. Let us all take responsibility to fight this pandemic together. Ha! Helly Paul! Hello, madam. Would you like to join us on this mission? Yes, but how? Just one question for you. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I have been using it for years. Oh, madam, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet properly, you need Hapik 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains remover. Hapik sticker formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergent and bleach. Wow! Now I'm convinced, Helen Paul. Really? Yeah! <laughs> now that she's part of the mission, the next house is yours. your mommy a major part of being a parent is being present I struck out and the winner is Mimi is stay in the picture no, and be the parent you just... want to be call 0700 AXA Mansard today to speak to an AXA financial advisor to travel to the Etihad Stadium to take on second place Manchester City. Will they get a reality check or can they pull off the upset? Find out as Manchester City welcomes Sheffield United on the Premier League Live showing this Saturday on the NT Network from 3.30pm. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Axis Bank, Papai Jebu, Lipton and Close Up in association with Goal.com. Welcome back to Abuja. Drug pushers and addicts are in for a tough time. That's because the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has signed a memorandum of understanding with the United States of America to strengthen the existing partnership in the fight against illicit drug trafficking. Abdul Malik Hassan reports that this follows the visit of the U.S. Ambassador in Nigeria to the NDLEA office in Abuja. Just like in Nigeria, the fight against illicit drug use and trafficking is of utmost importance to the United States of America. Despite the successes being recorded in the two countries, the menace is far from being over. This, the strategic session between officials of the NDLEA and United States is aiming to provide a lasting solution to the issue. We have a long history of cooperation between our Drug Enforcement Agency and the State Department's Office of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Matters on the important issue of narcotics enforcement in Nigeria. So it was great to get uh, his assessment of the situation on the ground and how we might look toward uh, uh, renewed and, and uh, avenues of cooperation in the future. When this type of cooperation takes place, they are backed by a memorandum of understanding. There has been one that has been ongoing, they, not, not yet executed, and um, I executed it today. It will be passed on for uh, the signatures on the other side. 
Experts have the view that the renewed vigor will, to a great extent, facilitate a drug-free society in the two countries. In Abuja, Abdul Malik Hassan, NCA News. A former leader of the People's Democratic Party in Kogi East, Friday Makama, has led his supporters to defect to the All Progressives Congress, chairman of the APC caretaker and extraordinary convention planning committee. A governor, May Malabuni, received and assured them of equal opportunity, respective of their status in the party. Salih Abdullahi Guanara reports. Desire for me to join the All Progressive Friday Makama a notable politician from Kogi East, accompanied by his followers before Governor Mai Malabwini tore his PDP membership card to show his loyalty as a prospective APC member. Governor Mai Malabuni urged party faithful to take advantage of the party's registration exercise and promised to sustain the efforts of reconciliation. The mandate given to us as caretaker committee of this party is to reconcile and reposition this party. As a party, we have achieved a lot. We have reconciled so many states, and we are still reconciling, and we are still rebuilding and bringing in more people. I want to assure you the APC will always give you the level field to showcase your potential. Meanwhile, Materials for the party's registration and revalidation exercise have been distributed to all the 36 states and the FCT. This precedes the train the trainer workshop held ahead of the exercise in Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi Gwanara, NTA News. 384 Nigerians have been evacuated from Saudi Arabia. The returnees, comprising 300 males, 83 females and one child, arrived in Namdia Zigiwe International Airport in the afternoon. The returnees will be quarantined at the Federal Capital Territory, Hachkam, for 14 days in line with the COVID-19 protocols by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. It would be recalled that Nigerians in Saudi Arabia have been stranded as a result of visa expiration and restriction of travel as a result of coronavirus pandemic. The death has been announced of Justice Ibrahim Watila of the Federal High Court serving in Abelkuta. In a statement, the Chief Judge of the Federal High Court of Nigeria said the, said the deceased uh, passed away uh, on Sunday, 24th January this year, after a brief illness while extending condolence of the management of the court to the family of the late Justice Watila. The Chief Judge of the Federal High Court prayed God to grant the family courage to bear the loss. Final interment takes place Saturday, 30th January 2021. And that's NTN Network News for tonight. Thank you very much indeed for your company. I'm Joseph Johnson. Good night.